everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today let's make barbecue pulled pork in the Instant Pot. If you guys want to know how to make this, hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. Alright, let's start off with a few ingredients here. All we need is our pork, your barbecue sauce of choice, onions, garlic, and a bag of coleslaw. We're going to make our own coleslaw, but of course if you'd like you can just purchase your own. I'm just starting by dicing my onions. All you need is one cup's worth and four minced garlics. This is something I've always made in the crock pot, so having to make it in an instant pot is just that much better for me. This is perfect for taking to like a potluck kind of deal or some sort of party. I don't know, it's just really easy because you can make a lot at once and you can make these into little sliders if you'd like. Whatever makes it easier for you, but I mean this is just a must kind of thing when you have a large gathering. Or at least that's how I find it. This is also something that's a hit with both adults and kids. So this is a perfect, really great meal for anyone at all. Plus, if you're gluten sensitive like I am, you can buy the Rufus Teague barbecue sauce because they come gluten free. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Rufus Teague also has a sugar free version. And then I happened to see this at Walmart recently. It's a sugar free uh, smokehouse barbecue sauce from G Hughes. I, I don't know if it's new or what. I haven't seen it before, but I just saw it recently. And so I thought I'd have to share that with you guys. You know what, I'll insert a picture for you here. Again, this is the G Hughes brand. They actually also have like ketchup and honey mustard. I just purchased the honey mustard one. It's okay, but I mean, it's better for me, I guess, than actual honey and sugar. <laughs> but for those that are diabetic, you know what I mean. But I have seen those at Walmart and I believe you can purchase them on Amazon. I am in no way affiliated with either one of these products. I just use them because I need them for my benefit because of my diabetic and gluten sensitivity. Alright, so we've got everything chopped up. We're just going to move on now because I'm not going to get into all of that. We have everything nicely chopped up and we're going to go straight to our instant pot. I am just going to throw in my meat. Um, it's kind of frozen if you can tell. It's definitely not thawed out and so I'm just going to cook it for a little bit longer because they are frozen and I just wanted to see how fast it will. I really didn't want to have to thaw it out. That's what it is. This is also my way of just testing this little machine as much as I possibly can to see how very little I have to do in the kitchen. But go ahead and season with salt and pepper to taste. Totally up to you. I just did a little bit to cover only on top and that's it. Now grab your minced garlic and your cup of onion and we're just going to throw all of that into the pot all at once. And since we need liquid to get our instant pot going, I'm adding one and a half cups of water and a half a cup of barbecue sauce right inside of the pot. I really didn't want any other flavors except for the barbecue pulled pork that we're making so or the barbecue sauce, so that's why I did that. Make sure your knob is turned over to sealed and then we're just going to pressure cook this for one hour and 15 minutes, 75 minutes total. So one hour and 15 minutes and we're going to let that go. All right, while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and make coleslaw. Again, if you guys want to just purchase your own coleslaw, you are more than welcome to do that. But I mean, I don't know. I just always make my own coleslaw. So this is how I do it. I have a 14 ounce bag of coleslaw. I poured it right into a large bowl. And all I'm going to do is because um, I'm using a quarter cup measuring cup because it fits right into the jar of mayo that I'm going to be using. So <laughs> that's why I'm using that. But you'll see, I'm going to add a half a cup first. Now I'm going to go grab a plastic glove and I'm going to use it to help mix because it's just a lot easier than using any kind of fork or spoon or any kind of utensil. But all we're going to do is mix this around thoroughly. That's all you have to do. Pretty easy so far, right? So we're just going to do this first because we want to make sure we get a lot of the slaw or the coleslaw wet, moist or something, I guess. And also, I did not have any vinegar, but if you want vinegar in it because you like that little tangy flavor, add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar or the champagne vinegar. Even white vinegar, distilled vinegar is fine. Fun fact. I used to work at Dairy Queen in high school, so we make coleslaw in-house all the time and this is how I learned how to make it. Probably why I'm always making coleslaw, <laughs> but that is why I make coleslaw all the time. And yeah, we did use vinegar and sugar, but again, I didn't have any vinegar, so I missed out on that part, but it's still delicious. Now I am adding one third cup of Splenda. You can use regular sugar if you like. Use white sugar, don't go with brown sugar. 
but go ahead and mix that in there and all you're gonna do is just get your glove back on and mix all of that around making sure you get this one all over because you want a little bit of sweetness every time you take a bite as you're mixing you can see that it becomes a little bit more dry but I'm gonna add, go ahead and add my pepper first and then I'm gonna add another quarter cup of mayo right into this you could add more mayo if you like just keep adding a little bit at a time as you go you'll see if you get a little bit uh, bigger bag a little bigger bag how do you say that if you get a 16 ounce bag rather than a 14 ounce bag you might want to add a little bit more there you go so again just mix 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 that's all we have to do and that's how easy coleslaw is to make once everything is done mixing all you have to do is just set it aside in the refrigerator and let it chill while your barbecue pork is cooking in the instant pot One hour and 15 minutes later, I went ahead and put everything in the vent. It took about, what, 10, 15 minutes, I think. 10 minutes, maybe, to have it release. And look how beautiful that looks now. So you're going to want to grab a large bowl. Don't do, don't, just, you'll see. Don't be like me. I grabbed this tiny little bowl thinking it was enough because I knew the meat shrunk, but it's not enough. So, <laughs> but I didn't even try to get a bigger bowl. I don't know why. <laughs> but get a larger bowl. Look how, look at this. My goodness, it's so tender, it just falls right off and I'm trying to pull it out. So all you're gonna do is put all of this into a, into a larger bowl and then we're gonna shred it right up. If you wait a little bit, you could probably do it with your hands, but I just wanted to, I don't know, I just wanted to get this, I wanted to eat, okay? I just wanted to eat. <laughs> so you'll see, I'm just gonna grab forks and look at how easily it just shreds apart. I mean, it was pretty darn tender. So all I'm going to do is shred this all up. And this actually takes the longest part of the entire, okay, maybe the cooking part. But for you to actually do something, this takes the longest part, that shredding it apart part. <laughs> so once you have most of it shredded, then we're going to start adding our barbecue sauce. Again, your, your choice. Use your preference, whatever barbecue sauce it is that you'd like. And just mix it right into the bowl. Now remember, this is three and a half pounds of pork that we just cooked. Three and a half pounds is a lot, and it's gonna serve you at least a good 12 people for sure. And these are on large buns. So expect to use the entire jar of barbecue sauce inside of this mix. And all I'm doing here is I am mixing up my barbecue sauce and shredding up any large pieces of that I find as I go along. And then when I see that most of it has been mixed in, then I'm gonna grab more sauce and I'm gonna add it in, and I'm gonna continue to do this until I use the entire jar up. Again, shredding as you find any more large chunks in there. I think it took me about four different times for me to be able to put my barbecue sauce in, mix up my pork and shred as I'm doing this. Again, putting my barbecue sauce in, same thing, repeating myself doing this over and over again until everything was perfectly the way that I like it with all the sauce and all the pork being the right amount of barbecue sauce in there without you know having like a big chunk of sauce somewhere. Does that make sense? Again, grab a much larger bowl than I did because it would have just made things easier and faster and you wouldn't have to be as super careful as I was of anything falling out. But this is it for our sauce, for our barbecue pork. Pretty darn easy. And honestly, really more tender than the crock pot in my opinion. Once you're done with this, all we have to do is assemble our sandwich together and this is how it turns out. Pair this with whatever side it is that you'd like and if you guys like this recipe, please subscribe, hit the like button, and until the next meal, thank you for watching Watch Me Cook.